Today's video is going to be about stop orders, what they do and how to use them. You have probably heard of them before, but maybe you don't know their function or how they can help you. So sit back, relax, and let me break it down for you. Investment prices can vary and change. Sometimes the stock price has fallen in a dramatic way, which is difficult for many investors to deal with. Automatically, selling your stocks when they go below a certain point is called placing stop orders. Placing stop orders helps protect profits as well as preventing large losses if prices fall too low. This gives an investor an opportunity to set exit points on their trades without having to monitor them all day long. They'll be surprised how much time that saves. Here's an example. Suppose you own XYZ company shares and have decided 1% of your portfolio will be risk in this trade. So you're taking half the amount of risk because it just dropped down $45 or lower than sales. Automatically place one at 45 and leave it like that for now or just things depending on which direction the stock moves from there. There are risks associated with stock orders, which can be set too tightly. In other words, within the normal range of movement for a stock's price could cause you to exit a trade too soon. Your synthetic might pull back just enough to trigger your stop order and resume its upward trend the next day. If this happens, you may miss out on some big price rallies that way. Alternatively, placing an overly loose stop order, one that is far from where prices usually move as there can lead to what could amount to large losses in your stocks, regardless of everyday ups and downs or increases in irregularity. The two types of stop orders are the stop limit and the stop market. Each is used for different reasons. A stop market order will be triggered by a given price and once the order is triggered, it will fill at whatever prices they can find. Sometimes, there are gaps in between where the prices go up or down without anything happening to them. Usually, this happens when news that throws people off has come out of nowhere overnight and people need time to digest what was said before trading again. But stop limit order triggers at a specific price, then sets the threshold where it will fill. Let's say you want to set a stop limit order but not get too low of an asking price. So you set a trigger point of $45 and specify your desired purchase price as $42. If the stock falls down to $45, there is no sale trigger yet because it is still above $42. Meaning that if the next trade happens below this amount, its sell order would not be executed. This means, even though your original goal was to sell off your stocks in these circumstances and avoid big losses when they happen. Unfortunately, if things keep going bad for them, anything less than what you are willing time for or have patience with could result in bigger losses accumulated over time. Because now those who were already losing money on their shares just got more shares from yours, which only compounds their issue by adding more lost money onto theirs. Stop orders are made to mitigate risk so you might consider that if the stock market has an order for the same option and is available at a certain price, then it could be better to simply get out of that trade. With this being said, there is still a chance they will not execute your stock limit order, which may result in losing more than what you originally had planned. It's important before making this decision on whether or not to place a stock limit order, because it'll either help keep you in or out of the position when these circumstances happen. Now that you know about stop orders and what they do, Stay tuned on the next video and let's learn how to place them. If you enjoyed this video, please don't forget to like, share and subscribe and share it with your friends. We'll see you in our next episode. Thank you for watching.